Welcome. Okay, somebody forgot that I have a loud voice. Well, I don't think they forgot. They just a little louder than they were expected. Welcome to Kindersley Alliance Church this morning. I am looking around, and some of you don't know who I am. Um, and so I'm going to introduce myself uh, just for the next few minutes just to let you know who I am. Uh, my name is Ronald James Baker. I was born September 21st, 1953. That's way more than most of you want to know about who I am. But I did, I did write up a whole script about who I am because I was asked by Pastor Peter to at least ask, let you know a little bit about who I am. So uh, my first thing, this is an interactive service at some points, by the way, so just so you know, uh, I pastored here as a youth pastor from 1976 to 90, 1980, and then in 1980, I left for 25 years or so and came back in 2005 and served as a senior pastor here from 2005 until 2015 when I retired. Who am I? Ron Baker. Yeah, I'm still Ron Baker. That's, that's true. Anything else that you know about me that you might want to mention? I'm a Christian. Amen. Oh, my friend. Who, what do you know about me? I hung out at the Lutheran Church, and I got to know some really great people. And I also hung out at a United Church a little while back over this past year and just actually did two funerals for them this past year. And I lately was the interim pastor at the Be in Christ Church here in town, Clearview Community Church, for this last year, and I've just completed that term and that contract. Um, so that's another thing of who I am. Who am I? What was that? A yes, a servant of God. I love to serve wherever I am. And it doesn't matter where you put me, that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay, a few other things that I am. <laughs> Cynthia's husband. Very right. Unfortunately, Cynthia can't be here today. She is with her mother who had uh, broken her hip, uh, not her hip, her leg. And she's just hanging out with her and with her sister who's just had hip surgery. And she's down in Regina today. So Cynthia's, uh, Cynthia's husband, my former wife, who passed away in 2012, was Jill. And some of you will know her as well. I see some front row people here who know who I'm talking about that uh, were around when in the 1980s together. Yes, that was a, way, a little while back. I direct a Canadian Small Church Ministry Center. Uh, I'm mentoring young men. I'm a writer and producer, and right now I've just got a book that we're hoping to have out this fall uh, that I've done with some Eston College students on small churches, and I'm working on an EP of three songs with a fellow by the name of Andrew Kennedy, and so all of these things are fun things that I do. Who am I? Ron. Yes, this is Ron Baker. Each of you have your own story that you can tell, and I am so looking forward to hearing that story in our baptisms today. And so as we get to that point, Seth is going to be talking. I think Karen's, a, Karen's got a few things to say. Um, Karen's always got a few things to say, so I'm looking forward to what she has to say this morning. And so we're going to have a great time together in the baptism. I'm going to invite you to stand, and we're going to start with prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you that we can be here. We can worship together. We can thank you for all that you have done. And so in the midst of our time together this morning, may we lift our voices to you. May we bring to you a reminder of who we see you to be as Almighty God, the great Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may we, in the midst of all this, also remind ourselves that we are called to faith in you, to trust in you, and to obey you. We pray for these things as we join together in this baptismal service. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Don't sit down just yet. We're not going to project the next verse, but I think most of you know John 3.16. For God so loved that whose
I heard three versions of that, <laughs> for which I'm glad. I started with Awana here in the 1970s, and we were still King James, and new international versions come along, and now I, I love New Living Translation. I'm glad you at least know it and understand what it is. Today is our baptism day. This is a millennia-long tradition. We go back to Jesus talking about going into all the world and baptizing people. And so this is not a new thing in the Christian tradition. Over the years, we've seen it, and now today, we get to experience this once again. When the Kindersley Alliance Church began in 1938, they had their first baptism at my grandfather's farm. I loved it that I have that kind of tradition and legacy with this church. Uh, actually, the first baptism was in uh, a dam that my father, my grandfather had at the farm. Um, the train workers would come along and take water out of that to fill up their trains, and other people that needed water would come to his dam and pick up water, and they would pay for it. This, is, this was given freely to the church for people to come in and step in. My understanding was more in the summertime, so they actually didn't freeze. I was baptized in a dugout when it was still a little cool. And some of the rest of you have your own stories of your baptisms. When the Kindersley Alliance Church started, that was a beginning of the first baptism. Today, this is many baptisms later, and we look forward to that with those that are, for, are here. Now, one of the things that baptism brings to us and reminds us is that what we've done is surrendered our lives to someone else other than ourselves. And so in doing that, we give ourselves over to Jesus to follow whatever he asks us to do with our money, with our relationships, with whatever. We're no longer our own. We are crucified with Christ. Therefore, we live with him, surrendered completely to him. In saying that we surrender all to God, we're reminded that our goal is God himself. It's not joy, which I think is a marvelous benefit that we have in following God. I'm glad people get baptized and say, I'm going to follow God. If all that you're after is happiness and joy, you're going to be disappointed. If all that you're happy after is peace, and I just want to be comfortable and everything's nice, you're going to be disappointed. If all that you're after is God, then you're in for a real treat. And it gets better and better and better as the years go by. My first wife, Jill, and I, and a fellow by the name of Tim Choswold would find the stairwell in uh, the college that we were attending, and we would sing this as a trio, My Goal is God. It became a theme for me and for Jill, and even as I moved into my second marriage for Cynthia as well. Our goal is God, not something else. Although all the other things may be enjoyable, and God may bring to us, our goal is to be God. And that brings us to a happy day. When I talked about baptisms, I want to tell you a little bit more history about this church. The final surviving original member of this church passed away a few years ago. Who was, who was that? Those of you that are from? A lady by the name? Yes. Muriel Plum was the final one. Muriel loved to sing, and when she was a kid, i.e. a young adult, she would sing around the area with brothers and with other people, and they had a singing group, and they would be invited to go sing at different places and do different things. Muriel attended the first baptism that was held for the Alliance Church. She was an original member of this church back in 1938. I asked her one day, what's your favorite song? And Muriel turned to me and she said, oh, happy day. Those of you that have watched Sister Act, okay, that's not the song. Just to let you know, even though we could sing that one and I, I really enjoy it and could get carried away on it. 
But there was, a, there was a song that was sung in the 30s and prior called Oh Happy Day. And that song would have been to an up-tempo to their, at their time uh, beat. You'll find out that as we sing this song, we're, gonna, I'm gonna sing, we're just going to sing it through the verse, first verse twice. As we sing it, you'll hear the Oh Happy Day that we just sang. We're going to take an offering right now. And I invite you to prepare for that offering. We don't say take an offering. Because we're not taking this away from you. It's your opportunity to give. So we'll say we're going to receive an offering. You may be seated. And Gerald and Barry, good to see you leading in this. Father, thank you. You give to us so much more than what we know or what we expect. And so we give back freely, thankful that we have this opportunity of giving this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? That's good to hear. Uh, I am going to welcome, we've got uh, many visitors from uh, the Triuba cheering section from, I'll say, all over Saskatchewan. Does that, is that good enough? Anyone outside of Saskatchewan? Ah, from all over Canada. How about that? Well, welcome. We're glad that you're here. And uh, we, we like to say this. Uh, I like to say this. Um, you guys have absolutely landed at the best church this morning. And I'm so glad you're here. This is awesome. And welcome to the familiar faces and to the faces that are new. Uh, we're going to celebrate together. I have to tell you, uh, well, first of all, I should introduce myself. My name is Peter. I'm the pastor here, and um, this is an exciting day. Baptisms are some of my absolute favorite days. Um, there's baptism etiquette, and I want to uh, just introduce you to the etiquette because it's not fair to uh, have people uh, come and not know. We're going to cheer, and we're going to stand up. And we're going to shout, and we're going to clap, and we're going to kick our neighbor, and we're going to... All of the things that your mom said don't do, you're going to do. Do you know why? It's because of John the Baptist. So if anyone has a problem with this, you have to take it up with him. And let me explain why. John the Baptist used to come into a town. John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. And it's, it's, that's what he did. He baptized people. It's like saying, Robin the Farmer. John the Baptist would come in and he would come into a river or a body of water and he would stand there and he would baptize the people that came. And I'm going to tell you that I am sure that there was some young kid there standing next to the water who looked at their friend and said, I'm going to baptize you. <laughs> Poosh! And in they go. And I bet their mom turned around and said, Don't do that! John the Baptist started it. And he baptized the people who came. And the scriptures lead us to, to believe that this was, this was the thing going on in the town. This is where everyone came together. And I'll just bet someone misbehaved. So here is your permission. Today we misbehave. Today we cheer. Today we shout. Today we stomp our feet and we clap. And it's a good thing. We've got a couple of announcements to go over today. Um, we have a, a, a quite a few things to celebrate. Um, many of you know who Larissa Friesen is, and uh, also Mark Hebert. They got themselves engaged just a little bit yesterday. There's some fun pictures on uh, Facebook of, uh, of her being as shocked as a girl who's been expecting this since the day she was born can possibly be. She said yes. That's what she uh, texted me last night. Uh, we're after the service. We're going to get together as a congregation and pray for Eric, her father. He's, he says he's doing fine as tears roll down his cheeks. And it's, uh, yeah, so I, I'm kidding. I mean, we'll pray for you if you want. But uh, this is a celebration. This is an exciting thing. Um, I know that you're watching right now. We celebrate with you. What a great thing. And uh, thanks for letting us be part of that. Um, Cheryl Glass runs our kids' ministry, and she's not here today because she's sick. Now, 
My initial plan was to get out a whole bunch of markers and give them to the kids and say, go, go color Ron's shirt. But instead of that, we are going to invite the kids to stay and participate in the baptism service. As Cheryl's at home, getting better, I know that uh, she's watching as well, and so we're glad that you're with us. We hope that you get better soon. Um, we're going to take this opportunity and teach kids about baptism. And Ron has talked a little bit about baptism. In the tradition of uh, this church, we do something called believer's baptism. It means that you have to be old enough to voice that you are a believer, that you know who Jesus is, that he is your Savior. Then once that is done, we invite everyone to enter into a place of obedience and to say, this isn't about me. This is about God. And be baptized. And so we want the kids to watch it, and so we're going to invite them to be part of it today. Let's see what other ones I have. Okay, announcement for ladies' night out on Tuesday, May 24th at 7 p.m. here. Now, Jer has put out on the piano just outside, it's the piano without keys, the gray piano. She has put out the craft that's going to be done. I have to be honest, she told me it was there, so I went out to see it. When I looked at the crafts on the piano, I thought, surely it's not these ones. These ones were purchased. These ones a professional uh, artist has made. And Jer looked at me and laughed and said, no, these are the ones that we're going to make. You're going to be wowed by this. I invite you on your way out to look at these things. Listen, I might come to the women's night to make this thing because it looks awesome. And uh, I, it's... Yeah, I'm not actually going to come. But if you are a woman, Tuesday, May 24th, come. This will be a time of uh, getting together, of worshiping together through your hands, through art, through the creative way that is very much uh, in the person of Christ as he created everything. This is a creative thing. We also know that today is a hard day for many people. And uh, you have probably heard by now that Steve Mealy has passed away. And I was able to visit with him and with uh, a group of people who loved him dearly around uh, the bed in the hospital. And uh, he has passed away. For those of you who are grieving, we grieve with you. Um, everybody says that he was just the most wonderful guy. And that he was a wonderful band teacher and that he brought every student into a place of love of music. And so we grieve with you and we grieve in front of God. I'm going to invite you to bow your heads with me. We're going to pray, and then I'm going to pass the microphone over to Myron. Bow your heads with me. Lord, today is a day that you celebrate. Today is a day that I think you clap your hands and you shout, you stomp your feet. And you point down and you say, look, Look, they're doing the thing I created them to do. And we celebrate that, God. Lord, would you give us uh, the freedom to celebrate really freely, to shout, to jump. Lord, let us cheer so loud that dust falls from the ceiling. Lord, let us really just make a scene. And we will celebrate together. And we thank you and we worship you. Thank you for the words given to me earlier this week, Lord God. Uh, make me wise. Make us wise. In your name I pray. Amen. As Myron comes to the front, I just want to tell you, give you a bit of insight into why the service looks the way that it does today. Earlier this week, as I was preparing for uh, the sermon, I heard clearly from God, and he said, get out of the way. It's weird, because when God speaks, it is always... A loving, invitational tone. Always. Always. And this was that. It was sort of like when my mom, when I was a little kid, and we were standing at a parade, and my mom would put her hand on my shoulder, and she would say, get out of the way. What she was saying is, I want you to see the parade. I don't want you to get hurt. I don't want you to, to uh, be a hindrance or have someone hinder you, but you need to step back to give room for the parade. That was the tone I heard this week. Get out of the way. So the baptisms are the sermon. And I'm excited about it. I'm going to pass this over to Myron. And uh, we will enter into the time of the service uh, of corporate prayer. This is a worshipful time.
just want to, you know, see if there's any prayer requests, um, praise items that we want to bring to the congregation and to God, and that we can uh, pray about throughout the week, and that we can pray about here. So if you have any prayer or praise items, uh, let us know. That was just, if you didn't hear, Darlene Babcock is uh, in the hospital and has an issue with her feet, right? So for healing. That's just, if you didn't hear, that's BC uh, team from Eston. Uh, they got, a few of them got really, really sick, hospitalized, so they're, they're getting better, which we praise God for. Okay, well, let's go, uh, let's enter into time of prayer set our hearts right for uh, what's about to happen here today and the rest of the week, Lord. Lord, I just invite the Holy Spirit into this room that it would just come in and soak into every piece of our body and our fiber into this building, Lord, that uh, we would open our hearts to what you have to say to us today and what we're about to witness and how it will affect us. A um, bunch of us have already been baptized, but it's still an an exciting moment to see it happen again and uh, remind us what we did and why we did it and for those who haven't to experience what could be for them. I want to just pray for Mandy as she travels home uh, that you would just grant her safety as she uh, runs down the highway and that you would uh, keep her safe. For her mom Betty, um, she's having hip issues uh, that you would just be there uh, her healing touch would be upon her, whether that's through a doctor or through you, that uh, it would be an example of who you are and a testimony to who you are. I also want to add in my mom. Um, she's having a lot of trouble with her shoulders, that you would just uh, give the, her wisdom to where she should go and the doctor's wisdom as they try and figure this out, that... Uh, the pain that she's in that would be eased and that she would uh, feel your presence and, and healing there also. We want to praise God for healing. Um, we had an example given to us of David that uh, from where he was and where he is today is a testimony to who you are, the gifting you give people to heal others, and the miraculous time that you can do it in. It's amazing to watch and should make us all shout for joy and tell people that this is the person, this is the God we serve and we get to be with. Our Eston crew that was in BC, they're still healing to go. We just pray that you would just uh, continue that. We thank you that you are there with them and that they know that you are with them and that they can... Uh, use this somewhere in their life on the testimony of who you are in their lives. Also, Darlene Babcock needs your healing touch also. That you would just uh, be close to her and the people around her, that they would encourage her. Again, bring doctor's wisdom and knowledge as to how to figure it out and how to get it fixed up for her. We thank you for the moisture you have sent. It came in def several different uh, types this week. We are thankful for that. But we also continue to pray that uh, you would bring more. Um, you know our situation. We know that the ground is dry here. Um, we know there's other parts of the province and parts of the country that are soaking wet, which is hard to take right now for us here, but um, that you would just be with them also. They have the exact opposite problem, that you would just uh, be with them, keep them safe as they struggle to get things done. And the farmers here, as they continue in this area to get near the end, that they would just take the time they need and not rush through and, and have injuries that don't need to happen, Lord. I want to pray for our country, that we would continue to pray as believers that there's only one person to follow, one person, one truth that we need, and that is your truth, and that people would turn to you when they're seeking something, that they would find 
a believer to ask those questions and to give those believers the answers they need to, an to give to them. Also, our community here in Kindersley, that you would just show individually and as a church how we can reach out and touch. We've all been gifted with, um, with gifting, of gifts to use for your kingdom. That you would just uh, empower us, give us the boldness to use them, and to speak when we have the opportunities to speak. And then you would just show each and every one of us how we can impact our community. Finally, Lord, the people sitting here today, I just pray that you would just sink into their lives and that they would desire you more than anything else and watch the amazing things you can do in our lives and what we can do for you. I just pray for the rest of the service that it would be glorifying to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Ron has told you a little bit about uh, baptism, its place in uh, Christianity and uh, its place in this church, its historical significance here. Uh, I want to talk to you just briefly about testimony and what testimony is and why testimony is. Testimony is just very simply uh, a person telling their story of who they were and then the discovery, their own discovery as Jesus revealed himself to the person. And their understanding that something has happened and that they believe in Jesus as God, the Son of God, as represented in the Scriptures. And then the story of God's work in their life. After a, a, a moment of confession where they believe with their mind and they confess with their mouth. And then who they are today. There will be no one you see baptized, no one who gives their testimony that says that God is done with them or that they are perfect or they, they are without sin. Nobody. Just that they are obedient. Testimony is also something that reminds us of our own testimony. As people get baptized today, I will think about when I was baptized. I was about nine years old. It was at a church in Regina. I was baptized by my father. And a pastor spoke for me. He gave encouragement to me. And I was baptized. And as I hear other people's testimonies, I will remember my own testimony. And I ask you to be diligent and remember your own testimony. That moment when you confessed God, you are greater than me. And I will do what you ask me to do because you asked me to do it, even in my discomfort. Even though standing in the tub of nice warm water isn't the most comfortable thing. But God is greater and he has asked this of us and he has commanded this of us. And that's also why we celebrate today because we are watching people step out in obedience to Christ and we celebrate and we cheer. And here's the last thing. Testimony is a supernatural story. God uses it in a way that is special, is set apart. I don't think I'll ever forget baptizing a guy named Don Smoke. Don Smoke was a rough and tough guy. Drugs and alcohol. Uh, children with many, many women. And one day, he became a Christian. And one day, Jesus became more important to him than his own comfort. And he said, I've got to be baptized. And so he came to the church and he said, I want to be baptized. And we said, man, we're going to celebrate. We're going to cheer. We're going to stomp our feet. We're going to yell. This is the date. Invite everyone. Go out for supper afterwards. This is going to be a good thing. And he said, okay. And he said, I don't know. Maybe when I get into the water, flames are going to come down because I'm so terrible. And I said, okay, let's test that. We'll be in the water. I think we'll be okay. And so the day comes and he's going to be baptized. And this is a guy who fears nothing. And he shows up and he looks like he's about a six-year-old kid, just scared. What are people going to say? Oh, they're going to say yay. They're going to say hooray. They're going to say this is awesome. He said, I don't know. I said, I'm pretty sure. 
And so he comes down into the tank and he gives his testimony. And his testimony is, you think I was rotten, you don't know the half of it. But let me tell you about Jesus, what Jesus has done in my life and the evidence there. And I'm not perfect, you know I'm not perfect but I just want to be obedient. And down he goes and up he comes and he is cheering. He's not cheering, he's crying. Everyone else is cheering. I was crying. And out he gets and we go away and we think the story's done. Here's what I did not know. His daughter heard that he was going to be baptized. And she said, man, has he ever fooled a bunch of stupid people. And so I'm going to come and I'm going to hear his story. I'm going to hear him tell lies about how he's perfect. And when he gets baptized, when he comes up of the water, I'm going to point and I'm going to say fraud. She didn't really have quite enough courage to come to church. She also thought that maybe she'd get hit by lightning or something. So she goes out the night before and gets as drunk as she can get before she passes out doesn't sleep, comes, walks through the front door, liquid courage, comes, sits down, and her father tells the truth to a bunch of people who looked at him not with judgment, but with love. And he said, you think I was bad, you don't know the half of it. And then he gets baptized. And he says, I want to be obedient. I want Jesus not, not peace, not joy, Jesus. If peace and joy comes with that, great. But if it doesn't, I still want Jesus. And he said, if you're a Christian, then do this. And if he's God, then I had better do it. Through the alcohol haze, Jesus spoke to her and said, I'm real. You have never heard a celebration so loud as when she was baptized, not too long after that. And her testimony was, I was sitting right there, drunk, radiating alcohol. Everybody around me knew I was drunk. And my father told his testimony. And I understood the love of Jesus in a way I never could have before. That is the power of testimony. By the way, she became an intern at the church. Hilarious. She came to youth group and she taught youth group. We made her go up on stage and preach. She told us she couldn't preach. <laughs> she preaches today. She just doesn't know it. She's preached to you. That was her story. I just repeated it. That is the power of testimony. People who haven't heard people who have denied, God takes that and he says, nobody comes to the Father except through me and who I call hear my voice. Power of testimony. So I love baptism. I love what's about to happen. And I want you to feel free to cheer. But like really, I want you to stand up. Kevin, stand up. Well, we already had Carmen. If I ask her to do that, she's going to get mad. <laughs> Kevin, do you realize you're the only person standing up? Yeah. Do you know that you're going to be okay? Good. So you've all seen that you can stand up and you can even talk and you're going to be okay, even if you're not comfortable. Thank you, Kevin. You can have a seat. <laughs> and here's one last thing, and then I'm going to step into the baptismal. At the end of the service, I'm going to open up an offering for anyone else who would like to be baptized, we have prepared for you. We have towels. Just come. Just come and be baptized. I will stand in the tank. Be obedient. If Jesus is greater, then come. Oh, if there's sin in your life, be aware you're among friends. Everybody here has sin in their life. Everybody. So, Ron, now comes the uh, seamless transition where you stand up and sing, and I get in the tank, and nobody notices that that's happening, okay? <laughs> All right. Our first person to be baptized is Karen Von Trapp. Come on in, Karen.
Okay, you're you're the first, so you have to tell everyone, is the water warm enough? Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I've heard of some people that have been baptized on the 1st of January in the river in B.C. So this is a treat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I actually think this is better. Oh, I think uh, so, all too. All we had to do was skim out the old toenails and whatever else we found. <laughs> Heated up the water, and it's good. Uh-huh. All right. The way that we do this is that someone offers uh, an encouragement, someone who knows you, and you have uh, allowed me to do that, and I am honored to do so. Um, (laughs) You were my Facebook friend before I actually met you. Do you remember that? Yes. There was a, uh, a name, Karen Von Trapp, that came across... Uh, when I was quite new here, and so I was pretty sure that, uh, um, well, there's a lot of people who knew that who I was, and I didn't know who they were. So I was pretty sure that you had come to this church, and so I clicked accept. And uh, then I started to ask around, who's Karen Von Trapp? And uh, nobody knew. Really? <laughs> well, <laughs> you hadn't got here yet. Okay, that, you were still yeah. living in Moose Jaw, as I recall. That's right. And so you came, and we met and you have been to my home, and I have been to your home. We are backyard neighbors. Yes. And uh, there's something about you that stands out to me, and I want to tell you about it by way of encouragement, and it is this. Several times I have come up to you, and I have said, there is this thing I need prayer for. And in that very moment... You stop what you're doing and you pray. And you pray using my words, the words that I have requested, this is what I need prayer for. During a time of COVID when we weren't together, uh, the people who, um, the people who maybe lived uh, by themselves or people who who, uh, just were not commonly with people, it is very possible that they went for two years without hearing anyone pray for them. I knew that when I asked you to pray for me, you would pray. And if it was a matter of a camera that wasn't working as we were recording or a matter of there is a hard situation with a person, I could say to you, I need you to pray for this. I'm not going to tell you anything about it, but as God leads, please pray. And I knew that you would listen to God. And you would, it's kind of weird, you'd ask him how to pray, and then when he answered, you'd pray that way to him. That's a God thing. He Mm. does that. And I see that in your life. And I want to thank you for that. So by encouragement to you, you are someone who prays and prays well. I pray that that is something that continues and deepens and enriches your life uh, as you have mine. Karen, can we hear your testimony? Yes. Can you come drop this mic a bit? Um, I came to Salvation on the Saskatoon campus. This was in the early 70s. You may not be aware of it, but there was a revival going on. Um, It started at um, College Drive Alliance Church, and the youth group, there was a group of five friends who were absolutely on fire. College students evangelizing on campus and believe it or not the message of salvation walked into what my sociology class and I invited the young man who shared that testimony out for coffee and in in a course of three months where I uh, participated in that youth group I came to Christ and what that young man shared with me was you need to make Jesus Lord of your life before you make him Savior. And so from the beginning, my faith in God was a radical faith walk. And um, I, I could tell you more about that story, but I'd rather leave it for another time. Because a year later, 
another thing happened in my life that was absolutely life transforming. And that's what I want to focus on today. That was 50 years ago. And I feel like I'm in a year of jubilee. And what happened for me at that point in time was that Holy Spirit opened my understanding to become aware that, that behind Jesus was his father. And I had a personal encounter with my heavenly father. And I had been an orphan. I had been part of the, the um, foster care system. And knowing the father radically changed my life. It was wonderful knowing Jesus. But I want to celebrate knowing the father in this year. And I felt drawn to get baptized. And on Resurrection Sunday, there was a, 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 an aspect of, of the scriptures that just really opened up to me. I was reading about Jesus responding to Mary Magdalene in the garden. And, you know, what I was looking at was that Jesus was on his way to his father, but he deliberately waited to comfort Mary, the one who was near. And then he commissioned her to go and carry the first message of the new covenant after his resurrection. And what he sent her to tell the other hurting disciples was, go and tell my brothers and sisters that I'm ascending to my father and to your father. And Mary was sent to carry the, the message, the way is now open for the sons and daughters of God to come home to his house. You know, and, and, and as I remembered that, it was like I, I just really felt like I wanted to get rebaptized, but to carry this message. And I've also been looking at, at, at the story of Abraham and how at the age of 99, the father appeared to him and basically spoke to the words to him, walk before me and be mature. And I feel like I'm coming into a season of my life. I believe that, that, that my greatest, um, the, the, the best days of my life are ahead. I believe I'm going to see a very rich senior, like senior years. And so that's why I came to be baptized today. Thank you. I ask this question every time. And this is the question that actually matters. Karen. Do you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Absolutely. I'm going to get you to come put your toes right in the corner here. What do I do with that? Do come on right up here. <clears throat> and Karen, I happily baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you are in the young adults or you're in the youth group, you probably know Seth. Uh, but for many of us, his face is, is uh, pretty fresh. Uh, so enjoy getting to know Seth today. Um, Seth, who is going to come speak for you today? Uh, my grandma hole is. Grandma's coming. Come on up, Grandma. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, as you look in these three rows, you're seeing people that love you and are going to support you and have. And your grandpa and I, of course, we adore you, as every grandparent should, right? And we're just delighted, absolutely delighted to be part of this today. Because this is a very special moment in Seth's spiritual life. And we have witnessed your growth over the past few years. And I know that you truly desire 
to portray the model, not me, but Christ in me. The road ahead will not always be easy, we know that. Um, when you're young, sometimes you think that everything will go wonderful, but we know that there will be some tough times ahead. But I also know, if you keep your heart attuned to God and his leading, you will never regret the decision to follow Jesus. Mother Teresa said, he does the thinking, he does the writing, we are but a pencil in God's hand. Psalm 9, 9 and 10. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name will trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Seth, I want you to remember this. If God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. In happy moments, praise God. In difficult moments, seek God. In quiet moments, worship God. And in painful moments, trust God. You are so loved by all of us. And we commit to faithfully praying for you as you follow God's leading in the days ahead. So when we prepare for baptism, one of the things that I tell the people wanting to be baptized is um, there is a lot of your story that is important, but it's not testimony. And uh, today what is important is testimony. Uh, what I hadn't anticipated was, was just how literally Seth would take what I said and what he showed me. It was like half words. It was like short, like so short. And I said, Seth, thank you. Who are you? <laughs> tell us about you. And so uh, I want you to feel free. Okay. Um, tell us about yourself and, and uh, tell us who you are and who Jesus is. <clears throat> so my name is Seth Trihuba, of course. I am the oldest of seven younger siblings, three of whom are my step siblings, but I consider them my full siblings. As a kid, I never doubted the existence of God, but never cared to know who he actually is. Most of my family members are Christians, so I heard about the Bible often, but I remember being mad at God because of the circumstances he was allowing me and my loved ones to suffer through. Life at home was chaotic, with fights constantly breaking out between my mom and my previous stepfather. When I was 15, my mom divorced him for the safety of us kids, and later met a kind Christian man who she is now with, today. When I was 14, one of my best friends died. My biological father started visiting my siblings and I less and less every year, and I started to develop some serious social anxiety. Many times in my teen years, I would turn to God for comfort, but I was a lukewarm Christian at best, so I would quickly fall away. Instead, I got into the habit of playing video games and isolating myself in my room for hours any time I had the chance. The more I searched for satisfaction and earthly pleasures, the less I was satisfied because I knew I could never be fully satisfied apart from Christ. I am certain that God has used every trial I have ever been through to make me realize that I need him. While I was dead in my sin and without any hope, God drew me in. One night in 2018, while I sat on my couch, I thought about the meaning of life and where I would spend eternity. I remember looking at the Ten Commandments, thinking I had done all right since I probably hadn't broken all of them, but I realized that I had fallen short of the Lord's standard of good, and there was nothing that I could do or say in my strength to make myself right with God. James 2.10 says, For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. If it were not for the conviction of God through the law, I, would, I wouldn't have appreciated the loving kindness of the Father to send Jesus Christ to pay the fine that I could not afford. Jesus Christ lived a sinless life, died taking all sin to the grave, and rose again so that I may, live, I may freely live through him. Paraphrasing John 11:25, Jesus says that anyone who believes in him, though he may die, he shall live. By believing and trusting in Christ, I turned away from my old self and have been saved by his grace through faith. I remember feeling instantly satisfied and relieved knowing God was now 
with me no matter what trials might lay ahead. Today I'm getting baptized because I, God has commanded us to do so upon being saved, to display that it is no longer I who live, but Christ in me, and that to live is Christ and to die is gain. How are you feeling? Excited. Yeah? Nervous. Nervous? But excited. This can't go wrong, man. No, I know. <laughs> it's my job to put you under. Well, the worst part's over, so. It's, it's your job to come back up. <laughs> you know what the imagery here is? Me being put to death, putting my old self to death, being risen again with Christ. Buried under the waters of baptism. You know what happens if I leave you under the water? I'd probably drown to death. <laughs> Nine out of ten doctors agree. <laughs> Nine out of ten. That's the other guy just got fired. Figured so. You know what happens when you come back up out? Uh, I continue to breathe. It's a gasp of life. We'll leave you under there. And who will come out is alive in Christ. Mm. This is significant, man. This is a big deal. What happens right now, you'll tell people about. You'll lead people just with that story. You ready? Sure am. Seth Trehuba, are you a Christian? Yes, I am. I'm going to invite you to put your toes right in that corner. And I am delighted to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm dead. So now here's the deal. Some of you, what has been standing in front of you and baptism is that you don't want to talk into a mic. It is terrifying. No problem. Here's your opportunity. Ron's going to sing, and I'm going to stay right here. And I invite you to come and be baptized. We have a towel for you. It's not that cold outside. Turn the heat up on the car. You don't have to give a testimony. You just have to come and be willing to be baptized. I will stay right here. Ron, if you'll sing a song, and at the end of it, if you'll close the service, we'll be right here. God, we close, mindful that you are the one who is our Savior and our Lord. We've been reminded of that today in these baptisms and the testimonies that have been given, the affirmations that others have given to the new life that has been found in each one. And so we come with thankfulness, praising you. Thank you. You love us. You care for us. You watch over us. We are just so thankful. We come in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.